And so it's our pleasure to have, uh, to have you on this call today. Um, wow, I see a lot of people. Who's there in the room at, uh, at Children's Hunger Fund? I think I see David back there. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Maybe have each, each group introduce themselves? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. <laughs> oh, Justin's got me. So uh, there, Justin, you guys can hear me pretty well there at CHF? Okay. All righty, we can hear you guys, yeah. Okay, so uh, how about you guys introduce yourself so we know where you're at and who you are. I do, but maybe our, our community here doesn't. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I can start. Uh, I am Justin Phillips, um, and I'm here in our headquarters in Los Angeles with um, David Rodriguez and then Rafi Kiyumjin. Um, I am the manager of our supply chain and logistics. Um, David oversees the operations here um, in the West, um, and Rafi um, helps to oversee our Eurasia network um, in ministry development. And then uh, we also have Sam Lee, um, who also works with Rafi there um, to uh, work with our partners in Eurasia. Um, and then we have Arian Dieli there in Albania. Wonderful. Yeah, so Sam, where are you? I uh, work in headquarters, but today I am working from home caring for my distance learning children right now. Okay, that's great. We can relate to you, Sam. Yeah. 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 That's good. So, and so Sam, what is, what is your role again? You so officially Rafi. I am the director over Eastern Europe for ministry development. So All Rafi right. and I work together in Eurasia, which would cover Asia, Middle East, and uh, the um, Eastern Europe as well. So. That's great. I just want to tell you that your children are welcome on this call at any time. Okay, <laughs> don't don't worry about that. Appreciate. We can appreciate see that. we can see him in the background. Hi guys. Yeah, that's that's my oldest. He's a he's a, a fourth grader and he should be in class, but he obviously <laughs> he talking, so he's uh, curious about what's going on. So yeah, that's, that's why he's here. So. Well, this is very important too. Good morning. Um, so, and then Justin, David, and Rafi, you, uh, I'm assuming it looks like you guys are there in Silmar or in, uh, yeah, that's good. So how many of you have been to Children's Hunger Fund in Silmar? Okay. I don't know if you can see, but there's been a few. Thanks David and, and the team there for hosting us every time we go down to LA. I always call David like two hours before and say, I'm coming with 15 people. So, uh, but it's great. Um. Again, Children's Hunger Fund, uh, much of our furniture, the, probably in this room and in our in the um, base is from you guys, from Costco Returns and all the ministry we've been able to do with that. Thank you, guys. Uh, much of the chocolate we eat here on base is from Children's Hunger Fund. Anyway, I want to get down to it. Uh, you'll notice that we have Ron Wagner, who's also on the call. Um, Ron, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself, just so people know who you are. As Andy said, I'm Ron Wagner, and I was on staff for the Clean East from 99 to 2008, uh, and started working with Children's Hunger, Hunger Fund early in 2000. That's great. So Ron was uh, the head of procurement and distribution, and, um, and I think one of our first visits uh, with Ron, actually, we went to Children's Hunger Fund on the way down to the Natural Products Expo on our, my very first probably a month or so here at Gleanings. But anyway, we're all here. So Arian, tell us about you. Who Introduce yourself a little bit so we know who you are. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me uh, part of the meeting. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure to partner with Children's Hunger Fund but also you guys. So thank you so much for everything. We'll go into details later. Uh, I'm Arion, I'm uh, married, I have three kids. Um, my wife actually is from California, uh, from San Diego. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit more later about my testimony, a little bit more about my story. So but it's a pleasure to be part of this meeting. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's great. And just really quickly, what is your role? I, I, I'm assuming that you are in a pastoral role, is that correct? Yep, uh, 
I'm a pastor of a church in the southeast of Albania, but also I play the role of uh, the Mercy Network coordinator for the pastors in the region of, of Albania here. So that's great. That's great. It's so neat to think you're all the way over there and we're all the way over here. And it's wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for taking time this morning. And so I just want to kind of get right into it and let uh, the team there at Children's Hunger Fund share a little bit uh, just about the ministry and some of your most important mission and values and, and just anything that you'd like to share with us about, about CHF and, uh, and maybe its connection. It might be helpful for us to know the overall picture of CHF and then how it connects to Albania. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can start um, and kind of give, I guess, uh, the big picture of what CHS uh, mission is, and then I'll pass it over to um, Rafi here, and he can speak to uh, more of the work that we're doing internationally. Um, so um, we have three facilities in the U.S. Um, we're here in Los Angeles, which is the facility you guys are most familiar with, but we also have two facilities in Dallas and San Antonio in Texas. Um, and out of those three facilities, um, our core mission is to deliver hope um, to suffering children, both here in the U.S., but also all around the world. Um, and we do that through our um, staple food pack box item, which uh, is this 20-pound box of food. Um, so we have volunteers. Um, Obviously, you guys have come by as well who will help uh, us facilitate that in packing those boxes. And then we have other church partners in the U.S. who will come alongside us to um, help provide those resources. And so um, that's where we are just so grateful for you guys as well with the product that um, you've provided to us. I was kind of looking back through some of the numbers from um, even this year, and um, I think you guys have given us uh, 13 truckloads of product, um, which kind of includes your guys' soup mix and your dried fruit, the pasta. Um, you guys give us some oatmeal as well. Um, and then I think even some tea and other products. Um, internationally, we, uh, we work in 24 different countries. Um, we ship to about 10 or 12 of those. Um, obviously, this year looks very different um, with uh, the pandemic and, and di just different challenges that that has presented um, but uh, the countries that we've been able to send some of that product to um, is Romania, um, Albania. Obviously here, um, Arion can speak to, to some of that later. Um, and then the Philippines, uh, to Cuba, to Haiti. Um, and then we've also direct shipped um, two loads to Cambodia. So um, you guys are uh, just a staple to our industry the way that we're able to resource um, our partners there through uh, the container shipments, um, which has just been a tremendous blessing. Um, and then I know you guys have uh, also worked with David Rodriguez here um, in other ways as well. So um, that's kind of uh, the, I guess, high level view. And I'll pass it over to Rafi um, as to kind of what that looks like in more international context. Sure. So uh, let me start. You can hear me, right? Let, sorry, you're good. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Oh. So let me start with our mission. Um, basically, our mission is to deliver hope to suffering children by equipping local churches for gospel-centered mercy ministry. And so the way we carry out and deliver that hope is to partner with local churches and an NGO in that country. And through, that, through those local churches, we come alongside and we equip them with food pack boxes. I think you already saw those food pack boxes in the video that you watched. And so we fill up those boxes with about almost 20 pounds of food, and then we uh, fill up a container of those food pack boxes, and we put them in a container and ship them overseas to all these different countries that we have partnerships with. And then uh, once those containers get there, um, our NGO takes those food packs and distributes them to the local churches there in the country. 
and our churches take those food pack boxes and they start distributing them to families. They identify families in those communities that um, live in poverty, abject poverty. And so they take those food pack boxes and they build relationships with those families. And with that building of relationship, they're able to preach the gospel and uh, give them the, the, the greater hope of the gospel message. So what we do is we hit two birds with one stone. So the Bible tells us to help the poor and the needy, the widow and the orphan, right? And then it also tells us to carry out the Great Commission. So we are able to do both of those things um, through CHF so that we help the poor and the needy and we bring them the gospel message through partnering with uh, the NGO and the local churches in that country. Right now, we're in about 24 countries, as uh, Justin just mentioned. We have eight countries in Latin America. We have eight countries in Africa. And we have eight countries in Eurasia. Um, in Eurasia, we have um, <clears throat> Albania, Romania, uh, Belarus, Ukraine, and Tajikistan. And in Asia, we have four countries that we've partnered with in uh, Myanmar, Nepal, Thailand, and the Philippines. And so what, today you're going to hear from one of our partners, uh, Arian, in Albania. Arian, I'll pass it over to you, my brother, and the floor is yours. That's, that's really great. I just want to say the video that you have about Albania and Arian and the ministry, the Mercy Network there, is a great illustration of using the food pack um, to meet the, the needs in mercy, but also bringing the, the love and the truth of the gospel. Uh, for us, I just, I just want to say that is an absolute bullseye for our mission which is to feed the needy of the world physically and spiritually. And, um, and so, Arian, I just want to say, even before you speak, we are so thankful for you, and we're so excited to hear what, what the Lord is doing uh, in your life and in your community. So go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Well, and it's true, uh, God has been uh, very faithful throughout the years, but I want to say also that it is because of this type of partnership that uh, it's very important that we actually, I very often tell Sam and Rafi that they don't necessarily get all the joy that we get because we're in the front lines over there and we actually get to deliver the food back and be there. But we're, by saying that, I want to just uh, start by thanking all of uh, everybody who's involved in that with uh, what you guys as Gleanings provide for for us here uh, in Albania, but also CHF uh, dealing uh, with all the logistics and stuff like that. And I uh, joke uh, uh, very often with these guys that we just have the easy part. You guys have the hard part. We have the easy part. Just we get uh, the joy right away by getting to deliver the food packs and also seeing the uh, uh, also seeing uh, the joy of uh, the gospel going, going into the people's homes. So I want to share a little bit about my, my story a little bit uh, so I can uh, introduce myself better. I don't know how much you guys know about Albania. Albania is part of the Eastern Europe, but it's uh, right very close to the Western Europe. So uh, Albania was under communism for uh, 50 years, and prior to that was uh, under the Ottoman, Ottoman Empire for 500 years. So uh, in Albania, you will see a lot of uh, 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 Islam uh, influence, like 80%, uh, 70 80% of Albanians claim to be Muslims, and uh, there are other religions uh, in Albania. The Muslims are more nominal. Uh, unfortunately, in the last couple of years, we've seen a lot more of a radical teaching that's come in in Albania because they see Albania as a way to kind of enter to the Western world. Uh, so when communism fell in the early 90s, uh, my family came from a, a Muslim background. So right away, we considered ourselves as Muslims even though we didn't really necessarily knew at all what that meant because of 50 years of very harsh communism. 
uh, I remember me and my dad, we would go to mosque, uh, to the mosque like once a year, but that was it. Like we never really talked about God at all. Basically the most religious person in our home was my grandma who would, you know, say stuff about God, but to us never really, really applied what that meant and what it was. Uh, until early 1995, when uh, a group of uh, Christians from uh, a city southeast of Albania came into my village to do a VBS type of program, like a outreach, also for the, the children. And at that time, I was 12 years old. And uh, me as a committed Muslim, I went there because I heard a bunch of uh, Christians came to my village. So I went there to cause trouble. So. Uh, I went into the meetings. I remember like uh, filling my pockets with little stones so I can sit in the back of the uh, the crowd and just throw the stones so I can bring uh, cows in the in these guys' meeting. And uh, even though initially I was trying to outsmart them, you know, trying to be you know uh, very hard for them, I was very 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 early in my encounter with. Uh, the believers uh, that were serving in my village, uh, I was very challenged by the love and the care they, they showed for me. And that was like very, it was kind of messing with my mind in a, in a sense that I was like being like a super mean, I was trying to cause problems, but they were uh, like very patient, they were showing love, they were caring for me, they were genuinely, they, seemed, they really seemed that they were genuinely caring for me. It was not just, you know, for the sake of saying something but they really uh, wanted to know me. And, and I got to spend some time with them and without really realizing from a guy who was throwing stones, uh, I think God was uh, allowing that the gospel would penetrate my heart and I was able to hear the truth of the Bible and uh, uh, yeah, give my, my life to Christ. Um, and this, I was baptized uh, with a group of believers from my village in 1996, uh, a year later. And then um, uh, in 1997, Albania had a kind of a civil war, you know, where there were these uh, pyramid schemes uh, that were created uh, that uh, they, you put a, this amount of money in their bank and they would give you in a very short time, this amount of money. So, uh, basically, those these schemes collapsed, and then uh, Albania kind of, Albanians overthrew the government. So for a couple of months, there was a lot of uh, anarchy, and there was there was a lot of chaos in our country. Uh, right at this time, we uh, just be, just before this started to happen, we started we just bought a property uh, in the village I lived in uh, to use as a church building. And we were moving chairs, and we had a uh, a missionary from Brazil who was a pastor in the church in the village. But because of this uh, anarchy, they were required to leave Albania uh, because it was not safe. So most of the missionaries had to leave the country. And uh, I remember one morning as we were kind of transitioning from the building we were renting to the new property that we just purchased as a church, uh, the owner of the house that we were buying, he showed up in my house uh, with a set of keys and uh, he just came, knocked at the door and uh, he gave me the keys of the church. And I was like, why are you giving me the keys of the church? I'm only 13 years old. Why would you give me the keys? Why don't you go to the other believers? He's like, I need to leave the village. I'm moving. He was going to move to another city. Uh, he's like, uh, nobody wants the keys. Here are the keys. Take the keys. I'm leaving. So I took the keys because uh, the next day uh, uh, I was involved in the children's program back then. When I, mean, when I mean involved, I was pretty much the only, my only most important job was just setting up chairs. Uh, so that was my role in the children's ministry. So I knew that I had to show up and uh, get ready for the children's ministry. So I got the keys, went and called my friend who also was a Christian, same age as me. And uh, we went and visited all of the believers from uh, the village and wanted to ask, why don't you want to, why didn't you want to take the keys of the church? And pretty much most of the people who came to our church said that, oh, we're not Christians. 
we're just uh, we were there because a lot of Americans and a lot of foreigners were there. So they or they were gonna give us goods or we were gonna profit something from them. So we're not really Christians. We're traditional Muslims, but we were there in these meetings. So here we are, just me and my friend, two 13 year olds with uh, the keys of, uh, of a building, not knowing what to do. Uh, the only thing we knew for sure that the next day, a lot of kids were gonna show up for the children's program. So me and my friend, we had to prepare for the, my friend, he, he was the musician in our church. So he basically knew one or two songs maximum. And for months to come, we played those songs over and over and over again. I don't want to hear those songs anymore. I think that time is over in my life. Maybe in heaven, there will be a much better version of those songs, but uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, and I had to prepare the Bible studies uh, and I had to prepare the Bible story. I remember telling my first Bible story ever. I never looked any kid in, in the eyes. I stared at the floor the whole time and I, I had to memorize uh, for the first time, I probably said, praise the Lord for the Russian system of communism in Albania. What, what I mean by this is that the school system in Albania, it requires you to memorize everything. Like you, like a, you, the whole lecture, you memorize it, you recite it back to, to the teacher and you get a 10. Doesn't matter if you understood what you said or not, uh, you get a 10 or you get a pass only if you memorize it. So praise the Lord for the Russian system because I memorized the Bible story, uh, and I never looked at any of the kids in the eyes back at that day, at least at the first couple of uh, Bible stories. And this continued for a couple of months uh, for you guys to understand a little bit. So the church that we had in the village was a church plant of a bigger uh, church in the, in the city. But the problem, because of the anarchy, you were not allowed to move uh, from the city to the village to check out what was happening because uh, there, were, uh, there was no government, there was no police. Every village had to protect itself by the uh, gangs that were going and stealing stuff. So they had like checkpoints between the villages. And I was a 13 year old kid, so nobody would allow me. My parents would not ever allow me to go leave the village. It was not safe because basically what I meant anarchy was like you could walk down the street of the village and you could see grenades or uh, Kalashnikovs or uh, pistols laying in the ground, you know. So it was just because it was not safe at all. Uh, so the the church in the in the city heard that the, there were no believers in the village, and they were not able to check that and come and help and see what the situation was happening. So uh, for a couple of months, uh, me and my friend we basically ran the the church by ourselves. It was me and my friend doing the children's program. We started with a uh, children's program with 30 kids and by the end of the civil war we had about 80 to 100 kids every Saturday morning uh, and then when uh, kind of the government came back in control and uh, the cows, uh, cows was gone uh, me and myself we, uh, myself and my friend would jump on the bus and we went to the city uh, long story, that's another story. We had to find out the house of a new pastor that was pastoring the church in the city. It took us half a day to find uh, his house and we knocked on his door. He didn't even, he had no clue who we were. So we went back and we handed him the keys and we said, hey, come and help. Uh, so, uh, and then this uh, was in 90, uh, end of 97. And then in, I started working with children's ministry at the village until 2001, until I moved to the city, Korcha it's called, to study university. And I uh, was involved with a mother church that planted our church in there in 2001. And then uh, until 2012, uh, uh, I worked with the church there uh, in the city. And then a time came, I think they were kind of, fed up with me, they wanted to send me away. So uh, they sent me somewhere else to plant another church. So I moved to a different city uh, to plant uh, another church. Uh, that's, uh, it's not very far. Uh, to you guys, to Americans, it's just a drive down to Costco. But to us, it's uh, a lot. Half an hour is a big difference to us uh, from city to city. So uh, yeah, so that's a little bit of my story and how I came to the Lord and uh, 
honestly, when I look back in the story of what God has done in my life, uh, and every time I share, it feels like I'm sharing someone else's story, not my story. And uh, this is just a proof of God's faithfulness and God's glory in every every step of the of the way and every every detail. Now, when I look back, and yeah, so this is a little, a little bit about uh, my testimony and how God has been faithful throughout the years. That's so good. I I want to thank you so much for sharing about your own personal testimony because. Um, we, as our community, our, our hope for this meeting is to really connect personally with the, the ministry, uh, the ministries all over the world. And, you know, I'm sure that we could talk about uh, how many cleaners or uh, the food and, and numbers, but actually what we care about is you. And we, want, we care about what God is doing in your life and where he started with you. So that's amazing to hear your story. It reminds me of uh, it reminds me of Samuel when God was saying Samuel Samuel <laughs> he's just a boy you know and he was calling Samuel to lead and it's amazing that God that God had you and your friend he called you you know that's just uh, amazing that God chooses like a children you know basically he cho chooses children to lead uh, and and like gathering a hundred more children from your faithfulness and your obedience you know to God. But uh, that's so good. We, uh, I, you know, we saw the video and we we saw the girl uh, Flutura, I think her name is, and Flora, and uh, of course these girls they they stole our hearts. You know, where um, we'd love to hear like, are you are you still in contact with these girls and uh, how are they doing and yeah. Yeah, uh, let me start with Flutura, which uh, in English means butterfly. Basically, her name means butterfly. Uh, she now is uh, one of our most active youth group uh, girls. Like, she's amazing just to see, you know, her life transformation uh, and what the gospel has brought into her life, but not just in, through her, what the gospel is, done, is doing uh, in her family. I think the relationship that she has with her mom and dad and her sisters, and uh, even the relationship that we have through Plutra with her family is just an amazing testimony on God's faithfulness in so many, so many stories. Uh, the other girl that you guys saw, um, uh, she's still part of, uh, that girl was uh, part of the uh, safe home for uh, girls that we have in uh, Korcha, in one of the other cities that uh, our church is based on. Uh, yeah, she is still part of the, the church. Uh, uh, we are working very closely with her to find a, a job to integrate her into the uh, our uh, broader community. We're helping her to go to move into the university right now for her to study a degree in the local university. So it's just amazing, like a, uh, when, you, when you just look back on the, the stories, when you actually encounter a family or a situation or a girl or a kid and you don't know what that story is going to look like and just looking back uh being able to see the transformation and being able to see that it's not just a it's not just a, a good deed it's not just a, by being a good person it's because of the power of the gospel and the, the transformation for that uh, i want to show i don't know how much more time do we have uh yeah, we have probably about maybe 15 more minutes, and then we'd like to pray for you so uh, and share with you what we've been praying about. So, but yeah, please share. That's great. Uh, when I moved to uh, the Mother Church, uh, one of the, I think one of the, uh, the biggest blessings, uh, even working with uh, CHF, was that uh, the view that we have for mercy ministry. That's been one of our such encouraging experiences to be able to see the mercy ministry and to see not just presenting them with the word and the gospel, but also be able to uh, to provide them uh, physically and be able to support them in the situation where they're in. And uh, as you saw in the video, and maybe the video doesn't describe all the different ministries that our church is involved, but uh, our church has planted uh, about 15 other churches uh, in the southeast of Albania. And right now we're 
have been uh, in the last three years. We have uh, a church plant in the capital, Tirana, which that's a, a different story for a different time, uh, which is, I think, the opportunities and God's faithfulness in so many ways. And uh, our church is involved heavily in the community. Uh, we have an elderly care home. Uh, it started because of communism. Uh, a lot of young Albanians left uh, right, after, right after communism because of poverty. A lot of young Albanians left Albania because there was no job. So they went to all over Europe, all over US. Uh, there are probably, uh, actually there is the same number of Albanians outside of Albania than in Albania. So there's 3 million people in Albania and there's 3.5 outside of Albania in immigration. Uh, but because of these young families uh, leaving, there were a lot of old people that were left alone in these uh, 10 story high apartment uh, communist blocks that uh, nobody cared for. And our church saw an opportunity. So the ladies of our church uh, and uh, the youth group of the church would go and clean the house and then uh, provide the wood for the winter, bring a hot meal, uh, pay their utilities, uh, buy their medicine, stuff like that. So this ministry started about 12 years ago uh, at our church by going uh, home to home. And then uh, we realized that after this, we needed a little bit more because there were more severe situations. And then God was able, because of his faithfulness, we were able to build uh, a 24-7 24, uh, uh, 24 uh, facility, care for the elderly. Uh, so that's one of our ministries that our church is heavily involved. There is a, uh, the girl that you saw uh, in the video. Uh, she was from the girls' home. We have a girls and a boys' home uh, that are in risk for prostitution and abuse. And uh, that's where our church, together with the local community and uh, other uh, social services, we intervene specifically in the extreme uh, cases where we can save these uh, girls from uh, being sold into Italy or Greece or uh, in, other, in other countries. Uh, and also we have uh, two street kid centers, uh, which that means that there are about 50 kids that uh, every day they would come to the facilities of the uh, church and they would uh, get a hot meal. They would, uh, they would uh, work on their homework and they would be able to uh, uh, get new, new pair of clothes because the situations they live in are uh, not optimal. So they would uh, come and get changed and uh, refreshed, take a shower. So this happens in daily basis. Uh, uh, uh so it's a and then uh we have a medical clinic that provides uh specifically care for people who are uh have uh bed wounds is that correct like uh when people who are not able to move and they cannot get because the hospital system in albania doesn't provide any in-home care that you only have to go into the hospital for them to treat your wound but because of their uh, because of, because they're not able to move and there's nobody else to uh, provide that service for them, our church provides this by sending nurses into homes and caring for that. And those are just a, a few of the things that our church is involved. Besides the you know the ministry of the gospel and the evangelism and the outreaches and also the food pack ministry and the soup kitchens. So it's just amazing. And I want to just stop by saying even like a and. Uh, some of the ministries that they were in, mentioned in the video, but things also that I mentioned right now, all of them have tried the soup mix. So if you guys happen to be in Albania, they can tell you, uh, you know, the ingredients that they were in the soup mix. Uh, uh, actually, uh, depends on the season, seasonal, you know, stuff. They would say, oh, the, this, the previous one had more broccoli or something like that. So they, you know, especially those guys talk about uh, the specifics of the, of the soup. Uh, but the, we just want to say that we're very, very thankful. And it's been a huge resource for the different ministries. Because uh, as I said earlier, we do get the joy of being able to see Flutura's life transformed and changed. We do get to see the joy. And Albania being a, uh, a poor country, we're not able to sustain to, to be able to find all the necessary resources to provide all of this. So we're very thankful 
for the partnership with CHF specifically, and also you guys being part of that. Uh, so thankful that we were able to see and mobilize the local church. And that's also something that we love about working with uh, CHF. It's not about uh, the organization, it's not about uh, the name of the church, but it's about the power of the gospel and the fullness of the power of the gospel, not necessarily just saying, you know, the Roman road and just telling them that they, you know, have no hope and they, if they don't believe, they will go to hell, but actually being able to share life with them and being able to provide for them uh, something that it's very significant to them. And we're very, very thankful for this partnership because it actually equips, it makes church what the church should be out there. And it's not, uh, we know that the church was not made for us to, you know, just discuss theological issues. Yeah, they're important, very important. But at the same time, we need to get out there and make our theology uh, practical and be able to, uh, to provide for the people in need and we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus in every way we can. So yeah, I'm very, very thankful for everything uh, that CHF and you guys have done. And I, when Rafi uh, and Sammy approached me about coming to this meeting, very eager. I'll love to be able to just to share the gratitude of the pastors of the churches that have been uh, impacted by your guys' generosity. And I know uh, what it means to deal with volunteers and organizing schedules and rosters and, you know, all the uh, behind the scenes, which I hate and thankful for people like you. So. That's, that's so good. I, I, I mean, I wish we had more time just to hear your heart and your stories. I love, I mean, I just love, uh, honestly, it, 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 it really sticks out to me. It really is showing to me your love for Christ and your love for your, your, how you've joined him in loving the people. Like you just real, I could tell you just love the community, you love the people, you love the children. And so we want to be behind you because we love them too, even though we don't know them. <laughs> we love them. We're not just here to produce food or to, uh, or to create some spreadsheets of what giving or something. We love, uh, we love Albania. We love all these different countries mentioned uh, we we go to these countries, you know, we send teams to go. Uh, and so we love to hear uh, when the food arrives to, to Albania, just uh, that God has given you, he's made you a shepherd of the people. He's made you a shepherd who loves the Thank people. You. And so bless you, brother, bless you. It's so good to connect Thank with you. you personally. And my last question for you maybe is, could you um, share with us... Um, Maybe there's a word or a scripture that God has been speaking to you personally lately, uh, just in the last season or months or even in the last couple days. Uh, is there something, even for the guys at CHF too, they're in the office and Sam, is there something that you feel like at CHF, uh, God has been kind of speaking to the team there that you're really focusing on and, and wa walking with God in this word? Uh, Arian, why don't you share first? Like, is there something God is speaking to you lately? Yeah, and uh, or, uh, great question because I actually was having a meeting this morning uh, with one of the pastors of our church. Uh, we're going as a church. We're going through Acts, and uh, you know, Acts one eight, uh, when it speaks about the power of the gospel, not only locally, but also going all across the world, starting from Jerusalem, going to uh, Samaria and all the ends of the world, and how that's a promise that God, even uh, going through Acts, we're uh, kind of in the middle of the Acts, and it was just surprisingly, uh, we were surprised as pastors just wrestling with the text, God's faithfulness in so many ways. Like, and also to, to us, that challenge for us personally was like, how are we involved? Not being only kind of the the receiving end but what is when the gospel touches our church and our lives what does that mean how we're going to make this promise how are we able to uh put this promise in action as god wants us to, to put it so yeah uh for me uh it's been very especially with the covid and the pandemic and you know and the limitations in if you want to say it this way but all, i want to say also the opportunities that we've had because of the COVID and stuff like that. So I think, uh, yeah, 
just being able to to know what the overall promise of God is. And I think the church's uh, commitment to be faithful to that promise and to be able to, even when, you know, the gospel doesn't seem like it's spreading as quickly as we would like to, uh, that we would trust uh, in his promise that he will uh, do his, uh, we'll see his promise come true to the right time. So, yeah. That's good. What about uh, maybe Justin, or if you, if you guys want to share maybe something at, there at CHF and Silmar, what's been kind of God speaking to your team there? Sam, you want to, you have anything you want to share? Otherwise I can, uh, I can share here. Yeah, maybe Sam. Let's hear from Sam. Yeah, Sam, give us a sermon. <laughs> I'll chime in. Um, I mean, I go ahead. I would just, I think echo uh, your your comments, Andy, earlier of just even hearing Arian. I mean, I've heard Arian's story a few times, and it's just so humbling and so exciting to see how um, Christ just works through um, him, but also just how he's working in the country of Albania. And I think. Um, for me, that's just been the story of, I think, even this season in the last six months, just being so humbled um, that God chooses us, um, so humbled that God um, chooses to work through gleanings, chooses to work through um, through us here at CHF. Um, and a passage that's really just stood out to me is Psalm 34. Um, it's one that I ran across, and, and God so graciously um kind of drew my attention to at the beginning um, back in April. Um, just been a great reminder for me, so I'll read it. Uh, just the first three verses um, where he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his together. Um, and I don't know, even just looking at, you know, all of us on this call here, it's just, so mind-boggling and, and um, amazing to see God's church at work all across the globe. How uh, you guys are up there in, in Central California, we're down here, and Arion all the way across. You know, and, uh, just for all of us to be able to to say, "Man, magnify the Lord with me," um, and how that's I think our cry here. We know that's your guys' cry at Gleaning um, and saying, you know, uh, uh, so. Uh, I don't know, that's what's been on my heart recently, and I, I, I speak for, I think, everyone in it, on this call in that. And um, So, yeah, thank you for, for giving us this opportunity just to, to rejoice together. That's so good, man. I really appreciate that. Um, and just uh, we wanted to take some time to share, you know, before we got on the call, we watched the video. And then we spent some time praying, and I wanted to give uh, some of our uh, community members here at Gleanings a chance to share maybe what God had put on their heart in prayer. So I'm just going to invite them up to sit here and share with you guys, okay? Don't be shy. Be quick. So, Arian, I was just really moved by that video um, of, of those girls just telling their story, but I just really felt like uh, something that uh, was just, I felt like God just kind of highlighted that these women, um, that just the abuse, the, the unjust things that have happened to them, that, you know, you begin to see their story of how God is healing it and how God is restoring things, but that God would take their brokenness, that God would take their their wounds and, and that he's bound them up and that he's healing them, but Lord, that their lives can be a testimony, that their lives are a testimony to the other gals and friends that they know that are in the same situation. And and I just wanted you to, um, to send that uh, to those girls, and maybe you already have, but that that would be something that you could share with them saying how, how God makes beauty out of ashes, how God turns the, the things of the enemy 
around and, and can in some way make good come from it. And, and uh, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just thankful for, for the call that God has on your life there and what you're doing. And, and I would say um, with confidence, the Lord says, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you. Amen. Okay, who's next? Hey, good morning. I was just, uh, you know, in the video, it just mentioned quickly about the uh, the Romas, the kind of traveling people. I just felt uh, really praying for the gypsies, you know, in, in kind of their culture and who they are, and just for revival among them in, in, in Albania, that there would be, like, in who they are and their culture, that somehow God would give you uh, wisdom and insight how to, to reach the, the gypsy people. We were just um, thinking about the the young men and the young the chil the children the boys. It was good to hear that there's a boys program too, <laughs> because um, the whole repeating of the way the fathers and the abuse, and then that that would be generational bro uh, broken in the generations of the families. That's all. Yeah, and especially in a culture uh, when shame and honor, all of that, that's even like a much more significant. Yeah, thank you. It is so, so important. So it, uh, this is kind of on my heart for a while now. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 15 and 16. And um, it says, even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Uh, and that's what I'm hearing. We don't have fathers. And these girls have been uh, wounded because, sorry, I'm looking at you on the screen. Uh, the uh, um, and so I want to, I just want to encourage you that um, you're being a father to these kids. And uh, I, I think God applauds that. Uh, he, I'll finish this verse. It says, even though you, you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I became your father, and in Christ you have become their father uh, through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. So I want to applaud your, your being a dad to these kids and uh, encouraging all of us to, who know what it's like to be a dad, who have kids and who know how to love, to uh, extend your fatherliness to, to these people. Thank you. Okay, yes. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I'm going to go off that Psalms 34 as well. And what the Lord put on my heart is in uh, then verse 8 that says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. And then down in 14 it says, turn away from the evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And then in 17 it says, when the righteous cry out for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. So, with that, Arian, thank you for what you're doing over there in Albania. Um, the uh, the widows and the children are always on our hearts here as well at Gleaning. So, um, you are a father to the fatherless. Continue to lead the. Continue to lead them, and uh, do God's will. And those that seek God will find him. So thank you again for what you're doing. And God bless you. Hello, Arian. Arian, uh, for you and your, your friends, when you meet together for prayer, 
Remember the Syrophoenician woman. Jesus walked at uh, 50 miles up out of the way, probably just to, to see her uh, with his disciples. The Syrophoenician woman, she needed something for her daughter. And when she came to the Lord and she started crying out, he didn't pay any attention to her. He kept going. She probably got in front of him and said, Lord, please help, help my daughter. He probably walked around her and kept on going. And again and again, the word doesn't say how long this took place, but it came to a point where the disciples themselves said, Master, will you tell her to get away from us? She's bothering us and you. And he kept on going. And she kept on begging for what she wanted. You guys are to keep on uh, uh, coming to the Lord. I don't care if it's on your knees, if you're spread out uh, on the floor. I don't care. You're not to give up because there's, there's, there's something that you need from him. And you're not to give up. You understand what I'm saying, Arian? You're not to give up. You're not to give up. You tell your friends to keep on going. And if the Lord stops and calls you dogs, you say, thank you, Lord. Yes, but we need some of the crumbs from your table. Maybe we're not Israelites, but we Gentile, we need something from you that only you can do for us. You're not to give up. Continue in prayer, brother. Thank you. Anybody else? We got a couple more. See, every, everyone wants to share what they prayed for you. Thank you. The verse that came right away when I was watch when I was oh, when I was watching the video was how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And um, I was just praying for you guys that are not afraid to go into those dark places, those scary places, and you bring good news and you just keep doing it. So. Um, yeah, I was praying especially for Irina that um, she would have courage to when she keeps going up against darkness, when she's rescuing, you know, when she's working with these kids that come from dark places, that she would have <laughs> she would have the strength to keep going. And I just bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Arian. Good morning. I want to encourage you because I have three adopted children and I actually have a fourth adopted son in Kenya. We have 10 children between a wife and I. But I just want to encourage you, keep on keeping on. But I also want to admonish you, there's two parts of the gospel. The Lord said, pray for the sick and pray for the rich. And I want you to be fearless on the second half of the gospel too is to go out and uh, demonstrate the works of God and uh, his miracles too. So I want to encourage you with that. Keep on with the mercy ministries because the love of God is shown in you. Thank you. Okay, I think I'll share one last thing. Um, and I also, you know, it's for Arian, but I also want to really thank, uh, you know, Justin and David and Rafi and Sam and just your whole team over there in Silmar. Uh, because really, I mean, there's a connection between Gleanings and CHF, but I, I really feel like there's, uh, there's just a friendship, you know, between us. And I really, um, I really appreciate that. I mean, I, I, maybe it's a good to share. Like, for instance, uh, we had these masks, right, that were donated, uh, several truckloads of masks that are, might be available here. And so I, I, first thing I called David and I said, can you use some of these masks? And so they were able to take a truckload of masks. Well, then we're also going to get a, a load of masks. So I reached out to David and said, would you guys be able to help us pick up those masks from Los Angeles and bring them up? And, um, so he said, yeah, let's try to do that next Tuesday. So um, just that, that friendliness and that willingness and then also providing us with the Costco returns for the base and for local ministries. Um, I just feel like anything, you know, you guys are always ready to help gleanings and us personally. 
And so I really want to thank you for your friendship and always just being kind and just being so serving. You guys have, you just have a willingness to serve. You always have. And, um, and so for Arian, uh, as I was watching the video, I wanted to kind of maybe pass on a message to Flutura. Uh, and I just could sense that in the video, I know the video maybe was a year ago or something like this. But uh, in the video, I could see that her, her father had become sick and, and is not speaking or hearing. And her mother had been sick. And they are both struggling with sickness. And I, I felt the Lord speaking to me that, that uh, Flutura's, her future is not to be sick. Her, her future is not to be sick. And uh, the Lord wants to uh, bring not only healing to her family, but he, uh, he wants to bring healing through her. Like she said, I want to be a doctor. And I think that is from the Lord. I don't think that's just a wish. I think the Lord wants to reverse what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to bring the sickness. And uh, so I just want to say, uh, I could see in her eyes, am I going to be sick too? Just like my mother and my father. And I want to say, uh, in the name of Jesus, no, she's not going to be sick. She's going to be well, and she's going to bring health and healing and blessing to so many people. So I, I don't know if you can pass that on. Yeah, I'd love to. But uh, so thank you to all of you. I do want to invite all of you to come to Gleanings. So uh, Justin and, and the team there, you guys are always welcome to come up. I know it's COVID time, but, you know, we can do it in a safe way. You guys can still come up and, and uh, especially when we have shipments and things, that would be great to have you guys come visit. And uh, Sam, uh, you know, you as well. Don't worry. We still, we still see you, Sam. Uh, and you're invited to come and, and, and even bring your families to come visit. And then Arian, I want to invite you as well. So when you're in San Diego visiting family or you're in the States and you're visiting CHF, come up and visit us. We want to we wanna show you the hospitality and, and welcome you. you here. Okay, I hope you will. So we're going to sing a song for you and then we'll be finished. Okay. So let's Correct. gather around and we'll sing the blessing song. Uh, as we're gathering, I don't know, Justin, if you guys have any final comments before we end. No, just thank you so much. Uh, this time has, I think, been a real blessing uh, to all of us. So I appreciate you guys uh, inviting us into this meeting. That's great. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna to sing. Ready? Thank you so much for your time, and I hope that we can connect again sometime soon. We'll say goodbye now. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank God you, bless guys. you guys. Thank you. Blessings to you. Thank you.